Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, you're welcome to click the thumbs up or the thumbs down. You're welcome to share and you're welcome to subscribe. You're even welcome to interact with my subscribers. Anyway, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, the coronavirus pandemic and how people are reacting to it. And, you know, we hear a lot of conspiracy theories and we're kind of, you know, nobody's really saying anything. A lot of people at the top, well, when I say people at the top, you've got some experts who are kind of trying to explain it to us, but you don't hear many voices. So I was wondering, what is it that people are afraid of? And I wrote down a couple of my thoughts that I'm going to share with you. OK, so how scared are you of COVID-19? That was the question I raised in my mind. And what aspect of COVID-19 are you afraid of? Then I um, asked some questions, some, you know, close questions. Uh, is it catching the disease? Is it not surviving the disease? Is it losing loved ones to the, to the disease? Is it loss of your livelihood? Is it loss of your freedom? Is it wondering if conspiracy theories are true, i.e. depopulation theory by Kissinger and Gates, ethnic minorities being sent off to concentration camps and not really dying from the coronavirus? Is it that um, COVID, the coronavirus isn't as bad as the media and the governments are making out, but an excuse to make vaccinations mandatory? And the vaccination will maim and kill millions. Those are those conspiracy theories. So is that what is making you afraid, if indeed you are afraid? Uh, people used to laugh at slaves, saying, how were there so many slaves? How many were, how come so many slaves were enslaved by so few? And I don't know how many of you have seen that in the past, but they used to think, oh, well, it serves them right. Those slaves, they deserved it. They allowed themselves to be enslaved. So now we have ourselves in the 20th century. Are we any different? I'm not even talking about colour. I'm talking about people generally. Are we any different from the slaves back in the 1700s? We're slaves to technology, aren't we? We're slaves to social media. And it's all been a part of the grooming process. So if you can't blame the government, if they decide to take you all up and say, we want you to do A, B, C, D and E, and you're enslaved to technology, you can't then blame them for doing something to you. It's like people saying, oh, God's not going to let this happen. This has not got nothing to do with God. This is man has free will. This is to do with individuals. Individuals are responsible for themselves. So if you decided to go along with everybody else, yeah, it's up to you. Don't start bawling and crying when you sit back and think, oh, you know, look what they're doing. Look what they're doing. Woe is me. You won't be able to do that. Because you see what's happening and you sit there and like, it's some kind of movie show. It's not really happening. Even though you don't have a job, it's not really happening. Even though you're homeless, it's not really happening. It's almost like people are in denial. In denial about what is actually happening. I think... I don't know if it's fear that um, demobilised them or whether it's um, denial. It's one of the two. Anyway, um, I put here, yeah, and yet in the 20th century, the majority of us have been groomed into technological slavery, mind bended by the media and seduced by social media, the social media spell. The mind is very powerful and many of us have surrendered it to a third party or a third source, i.e. social media, technology, whatever it is. 
and do not question or seek answers. People just think that, you know, people are very lazy, you know, generally. And I don't know if they've been groomed to be lazy, but they, you know, they want something for nothing. The majority of people, they want something for nothing. And the more convenient it is, the better it is. So they've, you've been groomed in, into a false sense of security because, because you like things easy and convenient. That's why you're in the position you are in. That's why you can't be bothered to even look up anything. That is why you can't be bothered to make an effort to do anything. You can't be bothered to read a paper. You just sit there like a load of bloody machines, absorbing everything that's coming in and not questioning it. And you've been groomed like that from the moment you started taking Social Security. For those people who didn't work or couldn't work and you've got the, the, those shows that they show you about people on the dole, they've been groomed from the very beginning to rely on society, on the government. And now you, in the 20th century, you are now going to have to rely on the government because of the coronavirus. You are now going to be in a vulnerable position. And you're now going to be in a fearful position, but not because of what I've mentioned before, but a totally different situation. So what have I got here? <clears throat> the media, just like us, are mere mortals, and they're censored. So just because the media puts out something, they put out what they are allowed to put out. They... And, and that is aspects and um, selected versions of the truth. They can do whatever. In today's world, you can do whatever you want and say whatever you want on the news. You can extract something from there. You can, I mean, with all these fancy um, Photoshop and other fancy equipment, you could do anything. You can take a piece from there, a piece from there, and piece it together and make it look like it's a part of the same scene. And even in movies, that's what they do. They take bits from there, bits from there. And because they want to create sensationalism, that's what they do. And it's fine. As long as, it's, as long as it hasn't been told to come down, it will go ahead. So you've got um, the media who, like everybody else, they want to keep a job. They want to keep their money coming in. So they have to do as they are told. Like the majority of us, once you're dependent on something or someone, you have to do what you are told. Otherwise, the rug is going to be pulled from under your feet and you're going to end up with nothing. Even those who did do what they're told, the rug is still being pulled under their feet because of the coronavirus. A lot of people, they was obeying, they were going to work, they were paying their taxes, paying their PAYE, doing everything right. And yet a lot of them are now without jobs and are unemployed. So sometimes it doesn't even matter whether you're towing the line or not. So, um, and I was also thinking, why do they allow people like David Icke, Louis Farrakhan, Rashid Batar to speak when they're, well, I don't know if they're spreading conspiracy theories, but their theories are quite alarming. But I've, I've come to the conclusion it's because they only appeal to a minority. The most of the people, most of the world think they're nutters and they're not going to take they're not going to take them seriously. So you might ask yourself the question, why don't doctors speak out if this is going to if they're if they're doing something with this coronavirus that's untoward or unethical? Why don't doctors speak out like everybody else? Everybody is has to make a living. Everybody has to make have a family. It's only the minority that are willing to stand up and say whatever they believe. And then they do that by putting their, their necks on the block. The majority of people, the majority of doctors, nurses, all they're thinking is that, look, I've got to pay my rent. I've got to look after my kids. I'm not rocking the boat. I'm not going to be the one to say anything. I'm not going to be a whistleblower. I could lose my license for this. I could be socially shamed. So now I'm not saying anything. So, OK, people sit back and say, well, if there was if there was something wrong with what's going on in the world, surely the doctors would speak. Surely um, other people who are in the know would speak. No, because we've all grown up to be dependent on a system 
one way or another. The only people who are not dependent on anyone or the system are the mega, mega rich, like Trump. He got into the White House. He didn't even need um, people to go out there and bring him in. Um, you know, most people, they need, they need um, what do they call them? They need to fundraise in order to be a president. <clears throat> I, think not, I think Trump is the only one who didn't need to fundraise to become a president. He is not reliant on anyone. Nor is Gates. Gates is not relying on anyone. They can do and they can take risks and they can say, and they're the most politest people. But they can do and say whatever they want because they're rich, they're not beholden to anyone. But everyone else, everyone else, we are dependent on the system for our bread and butter. And if that's the case, you have to toe the line. So, that is why people who may know, whatever it is they know, we don't know what they know. But you just hear these little snippets coming out, little snippet there, little snippet there, and you're thinking, is that for real? Or are they just trying to alarm us? But whatever it is, you know, I'm trying to explain why people's rationale is that, oh, if it wasn't right, Somebody would say something if the if some if you know they say that with the police, you have to be a criminal otherwise you wouldn't be stopped. I remember when those cameras came out. If you if you've got if you've got nothing to worry about, why are you worried about the facial recognition? You see what I mean? People automatically assume it's right until it's proved that it's wrong, and that is the mentality of a lot of the people. So. Reasons for fear. Well, the reasons for fear, for the majority of us, well, say the, you've only got the top 1% who are not afraid. So let's say 99% of us. Why we are afraid? We're afraid because of vulnerability and we're afraid of our dependency on others or the system. So, and now, because of the coronavirus, more people than ever are dependent on the government. You've got those who are furloughed, 80%. Oh, you know, they like being furloughed. You know, they're off, they're getting 80% from the government. They get that for three months. They can sit at home and do sweet, sweet FA. Oh, you know, I'm going to take the 80%. I, I, you know, I'm not going to go into work. Something for nothing. And yes, they'll justify it. I've been paying my taxes all my life. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. I'm entitled I've been working all my life. I'm entitled. So they'll take the 80%. Tick. Dependency. The unemployed, they have no jobs. They're now dependent on universal credit. And, and um, these loans and whatever are going out for businesses and stuff. You've got... Um, well, I've put the unworthy here because mainly that's to do with your upbringing. And it's a bit different from everything else, because sometimes, you know, but, you know, when you think about it, a lot of families now are raising children who feel unworthy because those, um, those systems that were in place when we were young, the discipline coupled with love no longer exist. A lot of children are neglected. A lot of children are abandoned. A lot of children do not get the love and affection that they would like. And so they grow up into unstable and unhealthy human beings. So that's but it, it creates a dependency because some of them, they go on drugs. Some of them, they go into gangs. Some of them become criminals. So it's all a part of that dependency. Then you have the sick, those who are dependent on the health service for their, treating their cancer, the diabetes, their sickle cell. And then you have the homeless. Well, I, you could argue that they're just dependent on the streets or refuges, but they are still dependent on other people to probably give them a bite to eat, give them enough cash so they can go and get a cup of tea. You've got the financially broken because of all these people ha who have lost their jobs. They're financially broken. Who are they now dependent on? They're dependent on loans. They're dependent on friends. They're dependent on all sorts. 
And you've got those who are suffering from mental illness. They're dependent on the system as well. They're dependent on, you know, on their um, injections and goodness knows what else. You've got those with criminal background. They, they're dependent on family and friends because if, once they're released on the streets, there's no, no future for them. For a lot of them, they do have an organisation, I forget what it's called, that does um, give jobs to criminals. But that's probably, co well, there are no jobs at the moment. People can't, no, not, not that there are no jobs. People can't work at the moment. And then you've got old age, that's a vulnerability. You've got those who have a question, questionable immigration status. They're going to be fearful. They're not going to feel as though they can stand up and speak and talk their minds because they don't want anybody knocking on their door. They don't want to draw attention to themselves. You've got those in broken relationships who are feeling vulnerable and alone at the moment. And you have um, the increased selfishness and greed where people just think about themselves, just what about what is all about me, what I want, and greed. People who are stealing from other people. And that kind of stuff. So um, fear is demobilizing and it renders you weak and it puts you, well, it's like sleep to the slaughter. So when you're fearful, you've got no one to challenge conditions. And like I said, 99% are in one of those categories. So if you're in one of those categories, are you really going to challenge the status quo? Are you really going to challenge what's happening, even though you see it with your eyes? I mean, in America, they've got these um, citizens that are going around checking out information, whether or not it's true or not. But, you know, to be honest, I don't know how authentic that is, because would would the government or the police allow people to walk into hospitals and walk in um, to testing centres just willy nilly like that to film? I can't imagine them doing that. Not unless, like I said, sometimes it's all to create hype and mystery. It's just like one big movie. That's what it's like. It's like a massive movie production. And so these people are allowed to go in and do that because what that will do is make people fear, think, be even more fearful. Okay, so if there's not all these coronavirus cases and all these people are dying, where are all these people? Why is the media saying that all these people are dying if they're not? And, you know, you start getting fearful about that. You start getting fearful about the unknown. And like I said, fear is demobilizing. It doesn't help you do anything. You can search for the truth. Are you going to find it? So what can you do to diffuse the fear? A lot of time is spent, the government, um, the people like um, Donald Trump, I mean, he spends nearly two hours every day talking to the people, answering questions. It's the same thing day over day. If I, if I had the time, I would try to listen to see if it's not the same, the replay of the same bloody thing that they're making out like it's new, because honestly... People asking the same questions, he's saying the same thing. And I'm thinking, why are you wasting your time saying the same thing? Weekly updates would be more than adequate. But you have people all the time trying to tell, you know, and then if you've noticed on your phones, everything comes up, be safe, COVID-19, stay indoors. It's everywhere. You're just getting it from all angles. So all of that, fuels fear in people who are already fearful, who are already have mental problems, who are already upset. So you really need to strengthen yourself because fear lowers your immune system. Stress lowers your immune system. I can't tell you how to reduce your own um, immune system, but I do know that what goes into your brain because the thing is, if your brain has been taken over by um, social networking and technology and you don't feel as though you can control your brain, you can try to get your um, control of your brain. One of my clients, he was saying to me that he's injected, he has a mental illness and he goes into seizures. And he was saying that he gets this drug and 
he was so lethargic and he says, I can't feel motivated. I don't feel motivated to do anything. And I said to him, you know, what do you think is stronger? Do you think the strong, the drug is stronger than your brain? Or do you think it's the other way around? I said, let's do a test. Every night before you go to bed, say an affirmation, whether that affirmation is, I feel energetic and enthusiastic. Do that for seven days, just before you're about to fall asleep and see how you come back to me next week. So that day when I saw him, his eyes were like this kind of dreamy and, you know, the next week I said, did you do it? He said, yeah, but he was much more alert, which means you can override the drug. I'm not saying that that is a definitive um, experiment. I'm just saying that, you know, what you tell your brain is what can actually, it makes a difference to your behaviour and how you view things. So if you, um, if you tell your brain negative things all the time, you're going to have negative outcomes. And that's basic CBT, cognitive behavioural therapy. Your perception of what is happening, like if you see somebody, you see somebody coming past you and they don't speak to you and in your head you're saying, oh, you know, they're ignoring me. What have I done? She spoke to me last week. Instead of thinking, oh, she's probably got something on her mind. She's probably distracted. She didn't see me. The two incidents are exactly the same, but the outcome is different. And the way you feel about the outcome is different. And that is what the brain does. The way you perceive what is going on determines your behaviour and your actions. I mean, some of it is actually real. Some of it you can't really get away from. I mean, you can't get away from the fact that you can't go to work at the moment and you are on lockdown. That is a reality. You know what I mean? So you can't get away from that. Anyway, um, what else is there? In summary, ask yourself what you are afraid of and see what you can do about reducing your fear. Um, people who are primed from fear. No, sorry, that's, that's wrong. You are in control of your thoughts. You alone are in control of your behavior. You govern your actions and you are responsible for your future and the future of your family. And that's how I've ended it there. So keep the peace, um, keep safe, and I hope you found this interesting. Okay, and that's all for now. Bye-bye.